What if the cool trend you thought was safe isn't safe at all? Welcome to the smokescreen of e-cigarettes. More and more, we're seeing a rise in the popularity of vaping among teens and young adults. And why wouldn't they? The sleek designs, the enticing flavors, the misconception that it's a safer alternative to traditional cigarettes. Some of these devices are so cleverly designed they might even pass for everyday items like USB flash drives. But don't be fooled. Behind this facade of safety lies a cloud of harmful aerosol that can lead to serious lung disease. And let's not forget the big players in the e-cigarette industry who have faced the heat for fueling this trend among the youth like Juul Labs. So is vaping really a safer alternative to traditional cigarettes or is it a wolf in sheep's clothing? Now let's debunk the myth of safe smoking. E-cigarettes, vapes, jewels, whatever you call them, they're not as harmless as they may seem. These devices, often disguised as everyday items like USB flash drives, contain more than just flavored water vapor. They're chock full of harmful substances, and here's the kicker, they're addictive. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the aerosol that users inhale and exhale from e-cigarettes can potentially expose both themselves and bystanders to harmful substances. These substances include heavy metals, volatile organic compounds, and other harmful ingredients. And let's not forget nicotine, a highly addictive substance that can harm adolescent brain development, which continues into the early to mid-20s. Moreover, the Food and Drug Administration has raised concerns about the potential for serious lung disease tied to e-cigarette use. Remember those heavy metals I mentioned? They can seriously damage your lungs, leading to conditions like bronchitis, emphysema, and in severe cases, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, a progressive disease that makes it hard to breathe. Let's also talk about synthetic nicotine. Some e-cigarette companies have been using lab-made nicotine in their products to sidestep regulations. But with the FDA's expanded authority, these products are now under scrutiny. Synthetic or not, nicotine is nicotine and it's addictive. And the menthol-flavored e-cigarettes? The FDA rejected a company's application to sell them due to lack of public health benefit and potential harm to youth vapors. The minty flavor might be enticing, but the potential risks are not worth the temporary pleasure. In light of these facts, it's clear that e-cigarettes carry risks and dangers that manufacturers often downplay or outright ignore. The message then is simple. There's no safe way to smoke. E-cigarettes are not an exception to this rule. As it turns out, there's no such thing as safe smoking, not even with e-cigarettes. But what does this mean for our kids and teens? Well, let's delve into it. These sleek, tech-inspired devices have found their way into the hands and pockets of our youth. It's not just about the cool factor, but the misconception that they're a safer alternative to traditional cigarettes. However, the reality is far from this. Remember when Juul, a popular e-cigarette maker, was ordered by the FDA to stop selling its products in the U.S.? This was due to insufficient data on the toxicological risks of its products. Juul held a significant market share, and its removal from the market could reshape the vaping industry. And it doesn't stop there. The FDA also rejected a company's application to sell menthol-flavored vaping products, citing lack of public health benefit and potential harm to youth vapors. The concern? Attracting youth to vaping with flavors and the risk of increased tobacco use among young people. The impact of these decisions? A significant step towards protecting our youth from the potential health risks associated with e-cigarettes. The message is clear, the vaping industry is under scrutiny and our youth's health is paramount. Our young ones are at risk and it's time we step up. How can we turn the tide on this vaping epidemic? Well, the first line of defense is awareness. Knowledge is power and we need to wield that power wisely. We must talk openly about the dangers of e-cigarettes, not just with each other, but with the younger generation as well. It's not enough to simply tell them not to do it. We must explain why. We can also support legislation that seeks to regulate these products. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration, for example, has been working tirelessly to curb the vaping epidemic, but they can't do it alone. We need to stand behind them, lending our voices to the cause. Finally, we can educate ourselves about the alternatives to vaping. Quitting is not easy, but there are resources and support systems out there. Whether it's nicotine patches, gum, or counseling, there are healthier ways to kick the habit. Remember, every conversation, every shared article, every piece of legislation brings us one step closer to a healthier future. 
Together, we can clear the smoke and protect our future generations.